okay so on this section we are going to discuss test in the integration environment and deploy changes so the last part on the previous section we were about to deploy a change set remember so we have an outbound chain set i'm just going to close this security warning we have an outbound chain set from our dev test sandbox which is a developer pro sandbox it's um, uploaded to our full sandbox here and i'm going to close this as well and the chain set is ready to be deployed so we are going to deploy this chain set. It contains two custom objects and um, list views and page layouts, um, as you can see on the previous video. So we are going to go ahead and deploy this. And we are going to just uh, say default because this particular chain set doesn't contain Apex codes. So therefore um, you can choose default. If you have Apex code, you can also specify which test classes you want to run that will test the codes within the chain set. But because this chain set, um, we don't have any Apex codes, I'm gonna choose default and just hit deploy. And hit okay. And this is the uh, sandbox, full sandbox. Click on deployment there. We have seven components and this is how it's uh, going to look like. Yeah, it's a shame that you can't actually try this out on a trailhead playground. So at least you know how in the real world environment, how it's going to look like, right? So this is how chain set deployment goes. This goes beyond because we include profiles so it is going beyond and then you see this weird <laughs> weird thing going on the circle yeah that's been like that for years now salesforce you should fix that so not required not required to run any apex test because it's just a custom object and page layout custom fields stuff like that so the deployment is succeeded now you can check course and language course designer now it's available on the developer um, no the kcm full of which is the the full sandbox so deployment has been um, deployed and it succeeded so okay so we have deployed that um, chain set onto our full sandbox and then you can always um, do further testing and then once everything is smooth and tested, you can prepare for a final deployment to the production. Basically, you repeat the process, but now uh, instead deploying to the full sandbox, you are deploying it to the production environment. To do that, you basically have to authorize it from the production um, environment authorize the connection the inbound inbound connection from the dev the developer sandbox onto the production and you're good to go you can clone the chain set first and then deploy it what about validation validate the inbound chain set this pertains um, usually when you have apex code but we have a warning as well here let's see validation locks the resources being deployed you can still read and write data to the org but you cannot make any setup changes that modify the metadata making changes to locked resources or items related to those resources can cause errors start a validation when things aren't too busy so this is an important note Start a validation when things aren't too busy, like during off-peak usage hours, and then limit changes to your org until the validation process completes. Okay, so you can do validation first and then quick deploy. And 
But usually, yeah, that's a, that's a best practice. But if it's a super simple chain set, like adding some few custom fields, you can deploy it right away. But you can have errors if you don't validate it first. All right. So um, what else? I think that's it. Um, we are going to go ahead and do the quiz now together. Why does Calvin validate a chain set? Why does validation need it? To upload a change, to perform a change, to perform a change set deployment dry run. Yeah, to test everything out a dry run. That's why uh, we do uh, validate first, okay? What is a common reason for the failure of deployment of a chain set? A component within a, the chain set has been misnamed. A deployment connection hasn't been authorized in the source org. Well, you can even validate if it's not authorized yet. The validation process was skipped. Um, a dependent component has not been included in the chain set. Yeah. So, for example, in our trail here, we are deploying a custom field and also the object, right? But what if we try to deploy the custom field and the object is not even there? That would be creating an error because a dependent component is not included. The object is not in the chain set, but we are inserting the field. That would cause an error. So this uh, finalized our uh, chain set module. We should get a new badge. I'll see you on the next module. Bada bing, bada boom. Woohoo! You've got a shiny new badge on your profile. Looks awesome. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce App Exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.